So where do you see the Google Lunar X Prize being in, say, 50 years from now? So whenever we develop a new prize here at the X Prize Foundation, we try to make sure that uh, it is something that's really going to jumpstart a program. It's going to set the ball rolling, and then we can sort of set back and say, OK, um, the various players in this industry have gotten a little bit of momentum, and now they don't need the extra help from us. Uh, so that is, uh, that is necessary if we want to see that nice leveraging factor of teams spending more than the prize value. You know, if the prize was all there was, uh, it wouldn't be in people's best interest to be willing to spend $50 million trying to win a $30 million prize. And we want that to happen. That's, that's the best result for everyone. So we sort of did our homework and we see a ton of different potential markets down the road where the team that wins the Google Lunar X Prize, or the teams that win, or even the teams that don't win but make a good showing, uh, we think have a number of businesses that they can start selling in the very near term future. Uh, but excitingly, that, that's also, you know, that's an important piece of intellectual property for our teams, their understanding of what the markets are. There are a few obvious ones. Everyone knows uh, that governments around the world are going back to the moon, that literally tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars have been allocated by space agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency and China, India, Japan, et cetera. Uh, they're all going back to the moon. They have this money to spend. They have lots of technology they're going to need. They have landing sites that need to be scouted out, things like that. So that's, that's one obvious potential market where you can sell your business to the government and say, uh, I'll do an entire mission for you, or I'll collect some data for you, or I'll carry a certain amount of mass for you if you have some payload that you want to deliver to the lunar surface. Uh, but we think there are tons of others. You know, If you look at the amount of money that, uh, that a major research university spends on the equipment needed to do science, mm -hmm. you know, if they want to buy a new mass spectrometer for a chemistry lab, they're putting down a substantial chunk of change. They're putting down hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars, to build a new laboratory facility. If you imagine in the future we have a, a Google Lunar X Prize winning team that is going back to the moon for a follow-up mission, uh, and they have the opportunity to say, well, this total mission is going to cost us $40 million to do, so we're going to divide up the mass uh, of what we're sending and we're going to sell chunks of it. So you can buy a two kilogram cube that's about this big and has this much power, and the price tag on that is $2 million because we've just sort of divided and spread that cost out across all the different slots. Well, $2 million, you know, it's a lot of money to me. It's probably a lot of money to you. But uh, to a major university, uh, that's not as much. Maybe, maybe the next uh, Hollywood producer wants to get, instead of uh, for their green screen footage, they want to get actual lunar footage instead of CGI or instead of uh, relying on 50-year-old uh, footage from previous missions. Maybe there's something like that willing to pay for it. Uh, there are all kinds of sort of subscription-based models where maybe, maybe people are going to pay $20 a year to get the right to get a live feed directly from the lunar surface from a high definition camera or pay even more of that to, to get to teleoperate a rover and drive it around wherever you want to go. Uh, so you know some of these ideas may work, some of them may not, but the exciting thing is with all these teams, they're going to be really pushing the envelope and trying to develop these ideas and, and we're all going to benefit from whichever one of them pan out.